Well, tomorrow, as we've discussed, it's Anzac Day. And it's grown over the years from a parade of returned servicemen and women to now, as the ranks of our Great War and World War II veterans have thinned, to become one of Australia's most important national occasions, honouring military personnel across many conflicts. As I said a little earlier in the program, tomorrow's commemoration of Anzac Day will be different, but no less reflective of the service of so many in our nation's history who have taken up arms to protect our freedom and our values. My next guest has worn the uniform of the Australian Army, been distinguished in battle in Vietnam, where he won the Military Cross 49 years ago. He's been Chief of Army, Chief of the Australian Defence Force, and more recently, along with his wife, Lynn, served as Australia's 26th Governor General. I'm delighted to welcome General the Honourable Sir Peter Cosgrove to the show live from Sydney. Thank you so much for your time on Anzac Eve. It's a, I'm a real thrill for me and my viewers to have you on the show. How will you commemorate tomorrow? Well, uh, I won't be able to march. Uh, and for five years while I was in the Governor-General's job, I was generally officiating uh, on Anzac Day somewhere overseas or here. I was looking forward to tramping down the road with my veterans group tomorrow. Now, the closest I can go is I'm wearing my regimental tie. So tomorrow morning, uh, up early, I will be out on the balcony of our home unit listening out for the strains of the last post, uh, ringing out across the lower North Shore. Um, and if I don't, it's not loud enough, I've got my own version, I'll play that, uh, you'll hear it. But more seriously, I think it's a, such an amazing time, uh, such a, a weird set of circumstances. Australia feels like it's been through the, the ten plagues of Egypt. Uh, we, the only thing we haven't had are the grasshoppers at the moment, but they're somewhere, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, to be in this situation, uh, I have to say my full admiration for governments and the community for getting this right. And what's been decreed for uh, gatherings tomorrow is entirely, entirely correct. So we will uh, park our, our reunions till it's right to do so. But tomorrow, uh, we'll still be thinking of all those people, uh, the sort of 60,000 who entered permanent social isolation, they're in war cemeteries. And we'll think about the ones who are still living, still in uniform. And we'll also, and I want to say a bit about this later, Peter, is about we can expand our thoughts tomorrow to a whole bunch of first responders, the people who keep us safe day in, day out, not least those people who are ministering to sufferers of coronavirus. Yeah, let's get to that in, in just a moment. Um, I'm absolutely keen to get your thoughts. I know because you've had such a, a life of service, you've worn the uniform, you've been in all of these uh, very senior positions in the military and in, and in the interface of the military and government and, of course, your vice-regal appointment. Tell me about some of the different ways you might have commemorated Anzac Day and any, anything that sort of struck you now as you and Lynn sit there on your veranda tomorrow, any memories that you have? I mean, I go back to that extraordinary uh, 100th year anniversary, the commemorative service uh, on the beach in Gallipoli a couple of years ago when Tony Abbott was Prime Minister. I will never forget that day, that moment, that dawn. I'll never forget it. It, it, it was just extraordinary. What sticks in your mind? Well, uh, on the 95th, uh, I was over there uh, because I knew I wouldn't be in uniform on the 100th. So on the 95th, I was over at Gallipoli. The day before, I had a Turkish military officer as my sort of senior escort died, and we were wandering the gullies and the beaches, and they were full of Australians who were there for the same reason, to line up to be there for the dawn service and then later the service at Lone Pine, and you'll, have, you'll remember that from your own time there. But it was going up those impossible defiles and gullies in that uh, tangled undergrowth uh, where diggers, uh, 95 years before, had stumbled their way up. And now what you were hearing was the cries in that arid Australian accent, people calling one to another from ridgeline to gully. Civilian people who were uh, walking where their forebears had, had struggled. And I thought, this is, this is so Australian. We had temporarily taken a lease back on those Gallipoli beaches with the kind permission of the Turks. And it was just 
it, it was really a, an experience. I've been back since, of course, and it's always uh, very, very moving, but that was special, that peaceful invasion that we were at in, on that 95th anniversary. And, of course, you know, those sorts of memories are there in France, they're there in, in Papua New Guinea when you go through uh, the war cemetery, so beautifully kept, you know, great credit there to the Commissioner of War Graves, beautifully kept, uh, the inscriptions on the tombs, the ages of so many of our fallen always strikes me so, so young. Why do you think over time, I remember as a kid, you know, it was a small service where the veterans marched and I was a, a guide or a brownie, I think, and we used to carry the flags. It was very much, though, their day. Now it's become a commemorative day that we all own in a way. What's been the transition? What's behind the transition? Wouldn't it be lovely just to know that? I mean, it's so, it has grown like topsy. I can recall back in the early 50s, which was when, as a little fellow, I was uh, watching my father and grandfather march in Sydney down George Street and uh, thousands and thousands of marches and the crowds were good, but it was all over Red Rover in a few hours. There was none of the lead up in the media. It was just sort of, well, there'll be Anzac Day and people will march. Uh, and it was good for the returned servicemen and women, but uh, for the rest of the community, it was something you did for an hour or two and then, oh, I don't know, the football or something else would be on. Uh, it was a day off. But now it's become this hugely significant national moment. And mm. I've, say, I've said to veterans groups uh, who sometimes in the past have felt proprietal about Anzac Day, well, yes, we are to some degree custodians of the spirit of Anzac, but the people of Australia own Anzac Day. It's a national day. And we are fortunate that they extend to us on those days, on, the, on Anzac Day in particular, that, that respect. So be aware of it. And if somebody wants to march alongside you, a kid with his great granddad's medals, well, grab him and walk with him. Don't, don't say, oh, you shouldn't be here, son. This is only for veterans. Rubbish. We've got to embrace the Australian people. I think it's the best lesson, if it goes down the generations like that, uh, about what it was that was at stake in the various conflicts and wars and, and what was the purpose of us. Why, do we, why should we value our freedoms? Uh, why are our values important? All of those things have to live beyond the immediate class of uh, veterans and, and those immediate conflicts. If we don't, then we repeat the mistakes and, the, and the, you know, fail to learn the, the lessons of the past. You mentioned a little earlier on there about first responders. What would you like yeah. to say? Oh, well, I, I mentioned this plagues of plagues of Egypt, the drought, which was sort of like uh, the death of, of a, a thousand dry mornings uh, on the land. Uh, and, and then, well, before we knew it, we got these horrible bushfires, which not as much loss of life as down in Victoria from years ago when that terrible uh, Black Saturday descended. But it just went on and on and on and on. There were, of course, deaths. And we became aware that day after day, week after week, fireys from New South Wales and from the other states who came to help, and you know, the fires were in you know, all over the place, and South Australia and Queensland, they were running out the fire. And we came to see that we had these people operating with the same sort of courage as we prized in our men and women who wore our uniform in harm's way overseas. These were our local heroes and performed magnificently. And now, of course, uh, we have the first responders, like the ambulance people and the healthcare workers, who are saving people's lives and ensuring that people not presently infected can stay that way. Uh, they are true champions of the community. And then if you ever needed a stark reminder that every police officer, man or woman, going to work in the morning, their loved ones are saying prayers that they'll come home at night. And we know that a couple of days ago, uh, four of Victoria's finest weren't able to come home to their loved ones. I think tomorrow is poignant. And we're, I think we ought to seize the moment tomorrow. And as well as... Uh, extending the reverence that people are planning to do towards the veterans and in the spirit of Anzac. Just expand that and think of your fellow Australians 
who do that day after day after day when we're not thinking about them or anything else in particular. Look, you're absolutely right. And yes, tomorrow is a day for the veterans, but the moment that we pause and take the opportunity to reflect on service and sacrifice, I think right in the middle of this crisis, and you rightly point out the bushfires as well, all of this, all of this is front of mind. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful day, it's a poignant day, and it's an important day tomorrow. Thank you very much for your time, Peter Cosgrove. And all the best to Thank your you. wonderful wife, Lynn, too, for all her years of work for the Australian community. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Peter.